Hey, ya uh, YouTubers, Tazman here, bringing you another episode of Tazman Teaches Programming in Java. <laughs> and in our last episodes, we've covered quite a bit of stuff. So we've talked about procedural versus OP. We've talked about encapsulation. We've talked about inheritance, polymorphism, and access modifiers. This episode, we're going to be talking about data types. Now, to help you understand what data types are, uh, there's basically two types of data types. There's your primitive data types, which are also known as simple and uncomplicated, and non-primitive. Now, there's a lot more non-primitive ones than the ones we're going to go over, and we might address those later on in other videos, but in this video, we're only going to do two that we use quite frequently. So uh, let's go on to begin, and I'm thinking... Uh, I'm thinking that maybe we'll jump to the, the, the whiteboard, or I guess the blackboard in this case. So your what data types are and why they're important is because they actually tell the computer how much RAM you're going to be using. Uh, let's go ahead and click here. So uh, let's see, let me get on the right layer. There we go. So if you were to think of your memory as just a ton of boxes, and I need to be in a paintbrush apparently, Control D. So if you think of your computer memory as just a ton of boxes, right? And if you've seen my uh, other episodes of uh, teaching programming logic, you'll understand this a little bit better. But if we pretend this is a very, very small piece of memory, uh, because when we're talking about memory uh, nowadays, you're talking about millions and billions of bytes and stuff. Let's see if I can get eight in here. No one there. I think we might be okay. Let's see, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And if we split this guy in half, we get seven and eight. So what we're going to talk about is, uh, first we're going to talk about those primitive types. Now your primitive types um, <clears throat> use up memory in very set, it, it's very, very, oh, what would be the word? It, it's set, you know, it's exactly, this is what it's going to do. So for example, we have our first data type is called void. And if you played Minecraft, you would know that void basically means nothing. It's null. There's no, no memories needed for this. Um, it's completely blank. Okay. Then our next, our smallest one would be a boolean, and it's called a. Uh, let's do it right. B o o l e a n, and this uses up one byte. So let's really quickly talk about, uh, not one byte, one bit, sorry. Uh, let's see if we can actually get this thing to erase. Normally it doesn't. Usually it switches to something else. <laughs> All right, so one bit. So one thing you need to understand first is what a bit is, what a byte is, B-I-T. So one bit would be just one of these memory locations. That is a bit. Whoops, that's a dit, a bit. Then you might have heard also one byte, which would be eight of these memory locations, which is why I split it up into eight. So that's a boolean is one bit. Now, because this is one bit, it either is a one or a zero because it's binary. And once again, if you don't understand what that all means, you should really check out my Taz Teaches Programming Logic series. It's only five episodes, but we cover all this stuff. Uh, the next one we would look at is called a byte. And one byte equal, well, let's just say it equals eight bits. Right? So that means in binary, you only have the option of one and zero. So that means in a bit, you could have a one here or you could have a zero here but that's it so generally a boolean is also known as your true or false or false right 
So it's either a zero or a one. Zero representing false, one representing true. Either there's something there or there's nothing there, right? Then when you're looking at a byte, you're looking at eight bits, which means you can have a one, maybe a zero here, a one, a one, a zero, a one, and maybe a zero, something like that. So this gives us a lot more information that the computer can handle. So one byte is, uh, you can actually have the value from 127 to negative 128. And once again, this has to do with uh, two's complement. Check out my other video series of Taz Teaches Programming Logic. You'll understand that a lot better because we need to be able to handle both positive and negative numbers. This is giving us 127 in the positive to negative 128. And the reason for that is because zero is kind of considered on the positive side. So there you go. Now, if we were doing unsigned, this would actually be 256, but we just do, uh, we do signed with everything. Okay, our next one is a short. S-H-O-R-T. And this uses up, and so far, well, basically all your primitives, maybe null is not considered, or void is considered, I'm not sure. Uh, void's kind of on its own, because it's the absence of anything. You don't need memory for a null, uh, necessarily. So a short, then, is actually um, 16 bits, or 2 bytes. B Y T E S, and that's 16 bits. So, as you can imagine, this would be a byte. Oops, the whole row is a byte. Then, this <laughs> that is the ugliest curly brace I ever seen would be a short. So, in this, we can have numbers up to let's see what is it to do, do, do 32,000 negative 32,000 almost like 32,700 or something like that uh, in the positive and negative so let's just say 32,000 we'll just say th thou thou t-h-o-u there's our u uh, so that's our bite or I mean our short then the most common one we will use is usually called an int. Now, back in the day when memory was very expensive and it was not very cheap to write programs, you really had to utilize exactly what memory you needed. You might, you know, if I'm looking for a number between 1 and 10, I would do it as a byte, right? Or 1 even up to 127, I would say, meh, do it as a byte. Nowadays, almost everything's an int uh, because it's a huge number. If you actually need more, then you can do something else. But let's just go ahead and we'll say int. So we have our int here. And an int is equal to uh, 32 bits, which is 4 bytes. Right? So 32. Uh, whoops, I did that wrong. Let's say four bytes which is 32 bits and this is a number between like negative 2 billion and positive 2 billion and uh, you'll understand why I'm using numbers these are all number types uh, so then we have that which is 32 bits right and that's like negative 2 bill Two positive, two bill, two bill. And that, being four bytes, takes up that much memory. Now it actually goes a little bit bigger, so the next one we have is called a long. And it is equal to 64 bits, or eight bytes. Eight bytes. Or 64 bits. And this can handle a number between, uh, I think it's like nine quintillion in the positive and negative. 
I'm, I'm not going to write that anymore. Just remember what I just said. Uh, after that, now these are all integer type, uh, or they're all whole numbers, which is what integer byte short. Whole number means it's a, a, a whole number. It can be negative, positive, but it's not a decimal number. It's not like a 1.5, that's a decimal, right? A whole number is any number that is whole, like 8, 32, 2, 1, 1, you know, all these are whole numbers we have up here. We also need to be able to handle are non-whole numbers. And so for that, we have something called a float, which is called also single precision uh, because it's not quite as precise as the other one. And it's 32, oops, I did that wrong. That's four bytes for that. Or 32 bits, 32 bits. B-I-T-S, bits, right? And then we also have one called a double, which is the same as your uh, long, which is a 32-bit, or a eight, <laughs> turn that in, eight bytes, B-Y-T-E-S, which is 64 bits. Now, when you hear about computers, you might hear, oh, it's a 32-bit operating system, 64-bit operating system. What this means is the processor can handle the uh, 8 bytes, which would be, it can handle I, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, one more. It can handle that much memory in a single, in a single pass where earlier ones were 32-bit, which means it couldn't handle, it had to do like a double in, in two passes to do a single double. If that doesn't make sense, that's okay. We'll, we'll get into it later. Then the last one you might think isn't necessarily an integer type number or something like that, but it actually is, it's called a char. And this is a single character. And this takes up 16, oh, whoops, let's say um, da, 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 two bytes and 16 bits. So these are your eight, I believe eight, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these are your eight types of uh, primitive data types. And the reason a char is considered, it's still a number because this is all a computer understands is ones and zeros. And to get letters, we use what's called the ASCII table that converts a certain pattern of these numbers into a certain letter. So I believe in uppercase A, if I'm not wrong, is like 60, or I mean 92. So if I said this is binary and said 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, um, 32, 64, 128. If I was trying to get the number 92, I would use one of those, which is 64. Uh, 64 and 32 is way too big. That's uh, like 96, so that's a zero. We could do a 16, 64, and 16. I'm not going to go through it, but you'll see that we could get 92. I, I'm not going to go through it real quick because um, it'll take too much time. And we have a lot to cover. Like I said, I, or did I say, this might be a longer video than you're used to. All right. So these are our primitive types. P-R-I-M-I-T-I-V-I-V. -I Primitive types. These are our primitive types right there. Whoops, let's get rid of you. Um, and hopefully you kind of understood that. If not, you'll this will be drilled into your head by the time we're done. So you don't have to memorize it. Just know that in programming, the ones you use the most will be this, this, and this is more of a return type that you use it for. Uh, probably that, uh, that, and that. These other ones you use under special uh, for special occasions. Float actually is pretty popular also, and we'll talk about that. But usually the byte, the short, and the long 
are special case only. Okay, so having said that, now let's talk about the non-primitive types. So these are more complex. Whoops, I need to uh, go add a layer real quick. There we go. And now we need our non-primitive types. Now for the non-primitive types, they kind of use the primitive types, but are more complex. So let's say non-primitive, non-P-I-M-I-T-I-V-E, primitive types. And we're only going to go over two of them, T-Y-P-E-S. Uh, and the first one we're going to go over is string, S-T-R-I-N-G. A string usually when you do a string it's a it's a group of characters kind of yeah it's, let's just say it's a group of characters and to tell the computer it's a string if i were doing an int as you've seen in our programming like if i did an int and i said this is my num i'd say it equals and i just do a number i don't have to do anything special with um string i do have to do some special i have to encap uh now i guess encapsulate it within double quotes. So if I were to say I'm doing a string here, S, and it's uppercase, in Java, case matters. So if I were creating a string, I would say string maybe, um, let's call my num. My num. Or no, my, st why would it be my num? This isn't a number. Let's maybe just call it name <laughs> okay so we would say string name equals and then we would put in quotes what our value is going to be now this is still reserving a chunk of memory however a string will reserve however much it needs for the value of the string now if we talked about remember we, we were talking about the characters so if I said t for Z Z M for N N, right? So what it's going to do is it needs to reserve 16 bits of memory here, or two bytes, two bytes. So it's going to know this is two, four, six, eight, 16 bytes is what it's going to. Wait, did I say that right? <laughs> I have to think for a second. Yes, 16 bytes. So that means this to save in memory is basically going to take up 16 bytes. Because each of these bits have to be. So it's kind of a grouping of chars. Now one other thing I didn't mention with chars. If you're using a char, for example, say char like that. And let's say letter equals. Usually you use a single quote and then the letter you want to uh, do it. And that tells the computer this is a single, ch this is a char, uh, even though this kind of tells it. And it knows that this is going to be taking its, its uh, regular spot. Um, let's see, I want to, so that's kind of the string in a nutshell. Let's go ahead and just delete this real quick and go back to painting. Paint, paint, paint. Where did my paintbrush go? There it is. And hit control D. So the other non-primitive that we're going to talk about is called an array. An array can actually be of any of the types we've gone over so far. An array is a collection of any of those other types. We could have a collection of strings. We could have a collection of, uh, of numbers, integers, doubles, characters, whatever we want, we can do an array. Um, so if you think about it, this would kind of represent an array of, let's say this is an array of integers, I and T, which means each one of these boxes is its own integer of, what do we say integer was? Wasn't it 32 by 32 bits? Yeah, 32 bits, which is uh, 16 bytes, 
or wait is that right <laughs> I can't think 32 no actually it's four bytes uh, so that means it needs to reserve memory four bytes here 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 so as you can see an array can take up uh, a significant amount of memory because it's actually all these now the way we kind of do an array or we declare an array it's kind of uh, let's jump into our our environment our IDE so as you can see this is an array I think I've mentioned it before we're saying args is what we're calling it and this is our array and it's of type string so in this case that's what that is so if we wanted to do our own array uh, there's a couple ways you can do it one is we could actually say something like int we're gonna do a string of integers and we could do it just like we have up here in the main <coughs> where we're passing it we'd say int and let's just say a right we could also uh, when you're declaring this is called declaring a variable <coughs> Whew. this is called declaring a variable what you're doing here is you're telling the computer computer I need memory for an integer array and I'm going to call that integer array a but using a comma I can actually also say and I'm also going to do one for an integer array B and that's it now the computer is only noting that you're going to be creating this it's not actually saying okay I need to go reserve 128 bytes of memory for an array because I I know I don't know how big it's going to be so this is telling the computer okay I need an array it might actually at this point go out and say well I know an integer is at least at least an integer is you know the the uh, 16 um, yeah 16 bits or 16 or 8 bytes or no wait 4 bytes and I'm confusing myself so it might go out and actually reserve just that first one so that it can assign a name to it and the name we've given it here is an A and here we've given another array B so it's gonna go and think about setting up two arrays one called A one called B right now there has been kind of controversy or people talking that is this more accurate or is this more accurate because this is saying I want an array called args this is just saying I want a string array and I'm naming it args in actuality these are the exact same thing uh, so whether you do it this way or this uh, the other way it doesn't matter however standard says do it this way so that's how I do it that's basically the accepted standard and the only time this would actually change is let's say we had another one and we said int and we say let's do a C and we'll do that as the array and let's say we want another we're gonna call uh, D right now here it's not going to be doing what we're thinking because we have two integers one's an integer array the other one's not an integer array so if you have multiple things you're declaring under the the one data type then it's best if they're both supposed to be arrays it's best to put it there which is the standard if you do it like this what we're actually getting if we come down here real quick we could for example so this is declaring the array now if we wanted to actually initialize the array we would say something like a equals and we need to say it's a new array so it's a new object or array and it's called it's an int and we want that int to be we want it to have three boxes right so this is 32 bits so that's 64 and then 64 32 is 96 I think so this means this is going to say okay now I know a my array a is going to be three elements big which means I need to reserve in memory um, 96 96 bits right yeah I think that's right <laughs> 
I keep losing myself. And then I could also do the same thing here and say, let's just do it this way real quick. C, V, enter V, enter V. Now this is gonna have a hissy because we're declaring the same thing. But we could do the same thing with B here because we're declaring an int array and we're given we're our data type is basically an int array and we're giving two variables the name so if we do b and then we do c and we do d we're going to see an error on d because d is not an array as you can see type mismatch you can't convert an int array to an integer so this is saying I want to take an integer and I want to assign it an array. Well, an array is multiple sets of that integer, so you can't assign multiple sets of an integer into a single integer. So that is what we call also, as far as error goes, this is called a syntax error, right? <clears throat> S-Y-N-T-A-X-E-R-O-R. We're probably gonna go over errors later, but there's three types of errors. There's syntax error, where you type something wrong, and the computer, if you're using an ID such as uh, Eclipse, it'll draw the wavy line underneath it and say, hey, something's wrong. You're trying to put a, a integer array into an integer, and that just doesn't work. So that's called a syntax error. We're actually gonna have another error in just a minute, and I'll, I'll explain that, yeah. So here we go. We, we are declaring an array. Now, we're gonna go over this in a little bit, but you can actually also initialize the same time you declare. So we could actually say, for example, let's just say int array e equals, but then we have to give it values if we want to automatically assign it. Then we don't need the new, new uh, designator. So what we do with that is we use our, our curly brace, like so, and we give it our value. So if we wanted this to be a three, three element array, we could say two comma space four comma space six, right? And that's legit. This means we have an array called E and its elements, it's three elements long and it has a two, four, and six in those elements. Now one other thing with arrays is element, the first element is actually element zero. It always starts with zero and then goes one and two. So even though this is three elements, if we were to put, if we were to think, oh, I want the first element, it's actually the second element because the first element is zero, right? And we'll, we'll go over that a lot because we need to drill that in our head that the elements in array always start at zero, not one. So, okay, uh, so that's that's uh, very important to know. Then we could also, uh, so this is actually initializing and assigning our uh, values into our array. So this is creating an array of E, which is three elements and those are the those are the values in the three elements so element zero is two element one uh, element one is four element two is six three elements right there we could also do it more like this if we don't know what the elements we know how many we want but we don't know what the elements are actually going to be we can also do an int do an array here and we'll call this f and we can say equals, and we can do it the exact same way we did down below. We can say new int three, or whatever we want. We could go more if we wanted, uh, but we could also do it this way. So we can actually assign our, we can assign how many elements we want without actually assigning values into those elements. And then in order to access that guy, all we would have to do is say which element we want. So we could say, okay, I want to assign into element zero. So we would say F and then our element number, and we would say equals, let's just say three, because it's an integer, we don't need quotes or anything like that. And then we could say F and then uh, let's do one 
And let's do, let's just count by threes now. Let's do six, right? And that, and then we say F, and then two. <laughs> I have to really make sure I'm doing this right. And do six, or nine, I mean. And then finally, let's do F. Oh, whoops, F bracket three bracket, and this would be 12. Now, I made an error here, and I actually did it on purpose. But as you see here, I have a third element. I have three here. This is a common thing where you think, oh, I have three, so I can go up to three. But remember, it starts at zero. Now, you'll notice the computer's not complaining about this, though. <clears throat> And the reason it's not complaining about this is because it's not keeping track of how many elements this array has in it. It knows there's an array as far as the ID goes. You might have more advanced IDs that go into more uh, checking and stuff. But as a basic thing, this is not necessarily an error. It doesn't consider it an error because, yes, it is an array, and I'm assigning it a value. I'm assigning an, in uh, one of the... Uh, one of the okay, elements a value. That's all legit. What it doesn't understand is that uh, that value, there's, there's not an array slot for it. We don't have a third. This would be a four element array. So if we ran this right now, we would get an error saying Java Lang array out of out of bounds exception. And then it says three, right? So this is telling me basically it's a three element array. And if I came in here, I could see at line 19, which is right here, I could say, oh wait, huh, that is not good. So this is actually called a logic error. And these are actually the hardest ones to catch. <clears throat> I mean, this is a runtime error. Sorry, a runtime error. So that's a runtime error. And they're actually the easiest one to catch is probably syntax because the computer catches it for you. You just have to go figure out why you caused an error. The runtime, it's pretty easy too because it actually will give you an error when it runs. The third one that we're, we'll go into these in more detail later, but it's called the uh, logical error. And these are the hardest ones to catch because your program will work flawlessly. Well, not flawlessly. It works, it appears to work as expected. However, it's giving wrong results. So a, a, a logic error is something like uh, in some big equation, I added instead of multiplied uh, or something along those lines. So the results I'm expecting are not what I'm getting. So that's called a logic error. All right, so one other thing I want to do here. So remember we have strings up here. Well, you might be asking, why do we have this public static void main and then we have a string? Why on earth does it have to have a string? Well, when you run a program, you might have done things like uh, in programming or in, in, in Windows, you might have done a ping where, you know, you say, uh, let's see, if we pull up my command prompt here. Yeah. I could go ping and then I could say uh, 10 dot actually let's do 192.168.1.1 which is my my firewall. So what I'm doing ping is the the program I'm running. This is called a parameter. This is what I'm sending to it. So ping is expecting me to send a parameter. If I type ping without a parameter, it will tell me, hey dummy, you need to give me a parameter, right? So I need to do ping and I need the target name or target IP. These are all optional uh, parameters that you can set. You could do a minus T to have it go forever and ever and ever or whatnot. So if we were, for example, we're gonna say, uh, actually I have this already because it's a little longer. I'm gonna do this and just paste this in here. So as you can see here, we're looking at args zero and args one. Now we're not assigning this. When I click run, we're not assigning args zero or args one, but I've actually 
modified this program or the the way it's launching I've added an argument and I wanted to show you really quick how you do that so if we run this and save it you'll see it actually says sub 2 Tasman on YouTube and that's because we're doing the string here of sub 2 then args1 must be Tasman because the next part is on and this must be YouTube right so just to show you how you do that if we want to pass arguments to our program what we can do is we can come under the run we can click the little down arrow and go to run configurations and then we can go look at arguments and as you can see I don't have them numbered or anything and I don't even need the quotes I put those in uh, you would need quotes if like I did use space tube or something like that because this would actually be one argument and this would be the next argument if I do the quotes it considers it one argument but as you can see here, I'm passing when this program, so if I were running this program, which is called data types, my execution line would be data types, space, Tasman, space, YouTube. And that's what it's running. And that's why this has this, so that we can actually pass it arguments. And sometimes we want that, like with the ping. So there you go. Let me just see. Um, I think think in the next episode we're going to talk about variables which is what we're assigning the names we're assigning our, our locations of memory we're at 36 ish minutes and I don't want to uh, to go too long but I think going over the data types I think that was really good I think we covered a lot hopefully you guys understood what was going on and what what I was talking about if you didn't feel free to leave comments down below. I might have missed something. I've told you it's really easy to error when you're teaching recording and you can't see people's face that they look confused or they're raising a hand or something like that. I need to get a drink real quick. I'm dying. Okay, so anyway, like I said, thank you so much for watching. I really do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below comment like and subscribe follow me on twitter check out my other channels and um all the information for those should be in the video description and until next time i'll be seeing you later bye